blow could have used the evidence of action on one conspirator as admissible evidence against all the conspirators from a substantive point of view that is to say the other conspirators may be convicted for the same act even though they did not participate in its commission that is the main thing this is what i wish to stress in other words a conspirator is to be regarded as an agent of the other conspirators and his acts are to be regarded as acts of a party to the crime in the sense of paragraph 24 of the criminal code ordinance what one does not have to use paragraph 24 because he becomes a partner to the crime as though paragraph 24 had been specifically applied president of court uh, judge Rave, i have one more legal question mr hausner uh, this in connection uh, with the uh, corroboration uh, in regard to a party to a crime. You told the court uh, that in this matter, in each case, <coughs> uh, there is co corroboration by documents. Now, it is quite possible that such documents also come from the hands of a party to the crime. For instance, if I uh, remember the case of the skeletons, we have the testimony by Sievers, yes, Sievers. and a number of letters addressed to Eichmann, not letters written by Eichmann. I do not mean to say that in this matter there is no other corroboration. But as an example, uh, let us say that there was nothing else to corroborate, or again the question of the gas. The poison gas. There, we have a letter, uh, except Gerstein's report, a letter to Eichmann, or a letter where Eichmann is mentioned, not a letter by Eichmann. And my question is, if in the case of such documents, which originate from uh, accessories to the crime or parties to the crime, do you regard this as sufficient corroboration? If in a special case there is no other corroboration? Yes, the question is clear, Your Honor. I think I regard this as sufficient corroboration. I'm stressing it is not testimony but a, by an accessory to the crime. What is the idea behind corroboration? It is dangerous to refer to the testimony of an accessory to the crime because he may have various motives which may uh, invalidate the authenticity of his uh, statements. But when I find an official letter this no longer is a matter of testimony by an accessory to the crime. I base myself on a, an official document of the Reich, on internal reports. This is not a testimony by an accessory to the crime, by an accomplice. This is an act committed as part of Wetzel's duties, or Sievers' duties, or the duties of Brand. If I had summoned Wetzel here, and without any documents he would have said this, then the court might have said, he too is charged with the same crime. Where is the corroboration? But when I bring the internal minutes or the official document or the report, this is an act by the authorities of the state. This is not stained with the uh, complicity in this crime. For instance, if we take this Litzeni's testimony, in any case, I must say this, there is very strong corroboration in the Kostner report. For instance, the entire Becher affair.
And even if we regard Becha and Vislitseni both as accomplices in the crime with regard to Hungarian Jewry, and they must be regarded in this way, then the corroboration in the Kastner report is very strong because when Kastner wrote in his diary, Vislitseni came and told me such and such, then this is very strong corroboration to what Vislitseni wrote later on. And when we know about the dispute which existed between the discussion between Becha and Himla on the one hand and Eichmann on the other hand, the court will remember, I do not have to recall this again. And this then is reflected in the Kastner report, then we have a complete picture, a well-rounded picture. And although Vislitseni is indeed an accomplice in most of Eichmann's crimes, and there's no dispute about that, and Becher certainly is an accomplice in the attempt to, uh, the extortion attempt with regard to the property, the Hungarian, the property of Hungarian Jews, not deportations, but the property, then we find corroboration in the official documents. And these are no longer in the nature, they are not stained by uh, the same stain which could apply to oral testimony by an accomplice. Judge Halevi, this is part of the res geste. Yes, it is part of the actions performed in the course of this which is charged here as being a crime. President of Court, thank you, Mr. Hausner. The coming session is on Monday morning at 8.30. And uh, we shall be listening to the summing up by the Council for the Defense. Thank you.